Hey y'all, it's Stacy. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're making a dish that is the perfect amalgamation of southern flavors. These are my pulled pork and collard green egg rolls. But we're just not going to leave it there. We're going to make an Alabama white barbecue sauce to dip these in. So that's where we're going to start is with our barbecue sauce. Now, Alabama white sauce is something that you find all over the country now, but it started at Big Bob Gibson's Barbecue in Decatur, Alabama. And it's this weird mayonnaise based sauce that they serve over smoked chicken, but it's kind of like a Southern ranch. It's great with just about everything. To make mine, I've started here with about half a cup of mayonnaise. I'm going to add two teaspoons of a Creole mustard or a spicy brown mustard. I'm adding about half a teaspoon of prepared horseradish. Now that's the jar of horseradish that you're gonna find in your grocery section, usually by the deli meats. It's gonna be chilled, might also be by the pickles. I'm going to add also one clove of garlic that I've minced, and you really want to use fresh here. I've got about a tablespoon of vinegar. I'm using white vinegar, but you could absolutely use a white wine or a champagne vinegar or even an apple cider vinegar. I hear that the folks at Big Bob Gibson use apple cider vinegar in theirs. To this, I'm gonna add some freshly cracked black pepper. Now this is kind of the secret ingredient here because it's gonna give us tons of flavor and using the fresh stuff really is a better option. I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon, but you could certainly add more or less to taste. And you might need to add a little salt here too. Now this is one of those things that you're really gonna to wanna to give some time in the fridge because what's gonna happen is that garlic, that fresh garlic is gonna combine with these flavors and really amp this up. So make it in advance, sit it in the fridge, let it rest for at least an hour just to allow those flavors to develop. And that's all that we've got to do for our sauce. All right, so let's make our egg rolls. Now this is the step that a lot of people are intimidated about, but it's actually pretty easy. What you're going to need is you're going to need about a pound of pulled pork. You can run by your favorite barbecue shop and pick up a pound. Um, I also include on this recipe how to make some in your slow cooker. So you have some options there. A lot of times though, it's just easier to run by and grab some because you don't need tons for this. And we've got our collard greens. Now, don't tell anybody, but I'm using canned collard greens here. You could totally use fresh if you wanted to cook those. A lot of the Southern style canned collard greens really have great flavor and they work perfectly in this dish because it makes it just a little bit easier. For our egg rolls, we've got a package of egg roll wrappers. You'll find these in the produce section of your grocery store. They're pretty easy to work with, but one thing that I will recommend is that you keep a moist paper towel right over the top of them because they will dry out pretty quickly and become brittle, which makes them a little difficult to work with. So let me show you how easy it is to put these together. So we're gonna start with one of our egg roll wrappers here, and we're gonna turn it on an angle just like this. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of our pulled pork. Now you could use pulled chicken or pulled turkey. On top of that, I'm going to add about a tablespoon and a half of our collard greens. You could use turnip greens here too as well. The important thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to overfill these. Uh, we don't want them to explode when they get in our hot oil. What I'm going to do is just dip my finger in a little water here and rub it around the edges of half of our egg roll wrapper. And that's gonna provide the glue to hold this together. So we're gonna start by taking this long end over and using my fingers to just kind of push back and compress that filling just a little bit. Then we're gonna tuck these edges in just like that. And the moisture from that water is gonna cause this to stick together. Just fold it over. And then we're just going to tuck this in and just roll it right up. Just like that. All right, so once we got these rolled, um, you're gonna end up with about 20 of these, but you could of course scale that recipe up or down. And I've allowed these to rest while we got our oil ready. In a heavy Dutch oven here, I added about three inches of vegetable oil and heated this to about 350 degrees. Now having a fry thermometer is super helpful there but you could also take the end 
of a wooden spoon like this, and when you put it in the oil and it bubbles around it, then you're probably pretty good to go ahead and start frying these. To do that, we're gonna work in batches. I've got my oven preheated to about 250 degrees so that we can keep these warm while we work through them. I'm gonna add about three of these to our skillet very carefully. These are gonna fry for three to four minutes, and I'm gonna turn them maybe once or twice. All right, so since our filling is already cooked through, all we're doing is warming these up and cooking those wrappers, so it's not gonna take long at all. I'm gonna drain these on a pan that I've lined with paper towels and then put a rack on top. This allows the oil to drip away without them sitting right next to the paper towel, which could sometimes make them soggy. These are gonna go in that preheated oven so that we can keep them warm while we work through our other ones. One of the things that you also need to do is to monitor your temperature. You may have to adjust your heat up or down just to ensure that we're frying at about 350 degrees. All right, so we got those fried. We've got some of our white barbecue sauce, dipping sauce here, and we're ready to go. Folks, serve these at a tailgate, serve them as appetizers, snacks, just about anything, and they're crazy delicious, and you saw just how easy they were. You can find this full, super easy recipe on the website at southernbite.com. Y'all enjoy. They're so good.